I was a realtor and an appraiser, actually. I got out of that. It wasn't for me. I did that for a few years. Um, and then I just transitioned just into real estate investing. And so I had rentals. I was doing fix and flips um, and wait, rentals, fix and flips and creative financing. So my history is a mix of all three of those. That was what I was doing before mobile homes, which I mean, I'm still doing it now. I shouldn't say before because I, I have mobile homes and I have regular real estate and I do both. Hi guys, this is Kelly from Hills Deals and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course, and today we have a very special guest, Miss Kimberly Land, in the house. Kimberly, right. how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Miss Kelly. How are you? I'm doing well. And you know what, Kimberly? Everybody knows that I, I got this fake mobile home in the back. And right. Looking at your scenery, it looked like it's fake, but by no means this, is it. So this is real. Kimberly, tell us where you are and tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am in Alaska right now, this minute physically. That's why you see the mountains. They normally have a little bit of snow. We're not, we're almost there. The mountains down that way have some snow on them. So I'm in Alaska. I'm from the Midwest. I'm a Chicago girl. I'm a city girl. So all of this is new for me because I grew up with buildings and concrete and parks. Nothing, nothing like this. Nothing like this. Mm -hmm. And so Kimberly, why Alaska? What, you, you everybody, <laughs> everybody always asks me that. So I'm like you, Kelly. I'm in the healthcare field, okay? I have a Master of Occupational Therapy. I am an occupational therapist. That is my job by trade. Okay. But I'm a travel therapist. So I left Chicago, went to California. I was there like a year and a half. Everything was great. Got a call from the travel company. You want to try Alaska? And I was like, that sounds like an adventure. So I said, yes, okay? Came here and just through a series of events, just kind of ended up staying. Left, went back to California for a little while, got another call, he came back, came back, and here I am. So that's how I ended up in Alaska for work. Okay. Because I, I yeah. saw a video. Was it a video? Yeah, it was a video. You and some movers, and you were showing, like, two other African-American guys. They're like, okay, we're, we're out here, because I didn't think it was a whole lot of no. Just not. Everybody says that, first of all, they're like, you're the first person I've ever met from Alaska. And then if they get real bold, they're like, you're the only black person I've ever seen in Alaska. And I'm like, it's true. So there are not a lot of black people here. There are not a lot of brown skinned people of African descent. I should say that. And not, not a lot of black Americans. There are Africans here, just not a lot of black Americans here. Um, a lot of people come here by way of uh, medical, like me, by way of the military, because, you know, we have um, the Air Force and the Army bases here right up the road. We might hear a plane in a minute. And then um, people come here just for opportunity. So typically when you see somebody that looks like me, there's just a lot of opportunity here. Like you can come here and the next day you can have a job. It's very easy to get work here. Very, very easy. Do you see yourself going back to Chicago? or that's Nope. 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 So my next move, I won't be in Alaska for forever. My next move is actually going to be um, moving down south as like a permanent base. But my goal and my dream has always been to live overseas or to just be to spend a, a bulk of my time overseas. And Kelly, you probably don't know this. So I'm going to give you a little trivia. I'll give you two guesses. Go ahead, go ahead. How many countries have I visited? How many you think? Just just take two guesses. How many countries do you think I've been? I don't know, five, ten, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> now, 80, 87. So before, yes, before the pandemic, <laughs> I love to travel. Before the pandemic, that's where I spent all of my time and all of my money was I would work, 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 work. That's part of the reason why I became a travel therapist, save the money, and then I would leave and go on vacation. I've been to all the continents, including Antarctica. So I've, I've been all over the world. That was my thing that I was doing before this. So I have a history of real estate investing. That was how I was getting money in addition to my job. And so then when the pandemic came along, I was kind of grounded. I was still doing real estate investing, but not here in Alaska. That's when I got into mobile home investing in Alaska. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Kim, uh, were you a realtor? I, at one point I was, and then I got out of being, a re I was a realtor and an appraiser, actually. I got out of that. It wasn't for me. I did that for a few years. Um, and then I just transitioned just into real estate investing. And so I had rentals. I was doing fix and flips. 
um, and wait, rentals, fix and flips and creative financing. So my history is a mix of all three of those. That was what I was doing before mobile homes, which I mean, I'm still doing it now. I shouldn't say before because I, I have mobile homes and I have regular real estate and I do both. So Kim, would you would you say you're like more successful at one than the other, like single family homes versus mobile homes or that's a good question. I think I think mobile homes are simpler. So I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say I'm more success man, maybe I guess I am more successful with mobile homes only because for me the trajectory happened just faster. It just happened a little bit faster. Mostly because the barrier to entry with mobile homes is, is really kind of almost non-existent. Like it was so low to get in. Whereas with real estate, I had to do a lot more just to get those, those properties. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I suppose you could say I'm more successful with mobile home investing because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot to do to get involved. Whereas with real estate, I had to do a lot just to get, you know, my first property and then my second and then, you know, on from there. Would you say it's like more competition on the single family side versus the mobile home side? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more competition because um, it's not just single families. You know, I, I was buying single families, multifamilies and commercial real estate, which, you know, was five units plus. Mm -hmm. So I had I had everything. There's definitely a lot more competition. Mm -hmm. But even though there's a lot more competition, a, a lot of people can't even compete because of money. Plain and simple. It's just money and credit are like the two large, the two biggest issues why people can't do it. My experience has been with mobile homes. It doesn't even compare. It's just, it's just a lot easier to get started, even when you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. with, with real estate, you have to be a little more creative about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, Kim, so you were a realtor. Uh, you still have a license or you still... You know. No, that was not for, I did that for a while. I had an office, I had a partner and everything. And it's like anything else. When you do something, you learn what you like and you learn what you don't like. And then you make decisions from there on which path you want to take. So I did that for a while. And then right before the market crashed, I stopped. I didn't want to do the licensing thing anymore because it just didn't benefit me as an investor. Now, for some people, it does benefit them. For for me and my goals and what I was doing, it did not benefit me. So I didn't renew my license and I haven't had it since. And I have zero interest. I do work with, with realtors okay. because they help me, but I have no interest in any state in the United States in being um, a licensed person. I have zero interest. <laughs> so None. You, you work with realtors, but you work with realtors on the mobile home side is that is that what you're saying no actually well sometimes i do occasionally i work with realtors on my real estate side because um there was a time when i was doing i was finding all of my own tenants and so a lot of people we do this particularly women we try to do everything and so one of the things that i've been learning over the years is it's okay to delegate to to, to get delegate responsibility and to delegate tasks mm -hmm. so with my real estate i was doing everything i was finding it <laughs> I was getting the tenants. I was making sure, you know, the units were, were ready. I was doing everything. Now I'm delegating things a lot more. So like I use, I have one realtor who loves working with Section 8 and with um, tenants. When a, a unit becomes vacant or something happens, I call her. I don't try to do all that stuff myself. I don't do anything. She does all the work and I will gladly pay her because that frees up time for me to make money doing other things. So I have a realtor for that. I have another one who brings me deals every now and again, like, hey, you know, are, are you interested? Blah, 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 blah. So everybody has like like a role. I don't do everything on my own like I used to. I, I, I'm Some things still kind of working on, but I'm working on like delegating things a lot more. So I use realtors um, in that, uh, sense. Okay. And so are you licensed in, uh, Alaska? In no, I don't want to be licensed for nothing. <laughs> no. no. Well, you know, you don't have to be licensed. Okay. So, um, you don't have to be licensed to sell. You don't have to be licensed to buy and you don't have to be licensed to renovate. So I do not have a license for anything. Occasionally I'll work with a licensed person. Like if I see a deal and maybe they have it, you know, listed, or maybe if I want to list a deal, like I have mobile homes in Illinois. So I'm working with licensed people in Illinois um, just because the situation, because I'm not physically there mm -hmm. and I have a team, but I don't have a full team there. So I work with licensed people in Illinois. But in Alaska, no, 
I haven't worked with any licensed people. The one licensed person that I wanted to work with, he actually turned me down. And that was a blessing. <laughs> he said, no, nah, I don't really do mobile homes. He was like the mobile home king here for a long time. Yeah. So he said, no, I don't do that anymore, but I will gladly help you. And so um, for if I have a question or whatever, I can message him because he knows all about Alaska mobile homes and he's really, really good at it. Wow. And he doesn't do it anymore. So that just opened. I'm glad because he was like, like I said, the king. So that just opened it up for me to be the queen. Yeah. Yep. So, Kim, how do y'all close deals out there in Alaska? Yeah. You know, what, what's the paperwork and the tech? Oh. You go to the DMV or is it online or how do y'all do it out there? Let me, let me tell you something that is so interesting. Do you know they don't have mobile home taxes out here? Can you believe that? Wow. That's a brand new thing as of this year. There are no taxes. For years prior, they had taxes. My experience has been based on my research for other states and the, the deals that I'm doing in the Midwest. Alaska has the highest, some of the highest taxes, probably apart from like California. But the taxes here, what I've seen would be between $300 and $800 per year per mobile home, which as you know, for a mobile home, it's just astronomical. Uh -huh. um, but I suppose people weren't paying it and they were having like a really hard time collecting their money. So this year they were like, yeah, we're done. No more mobile home taxes. So that's it. So if you owed up to this year, you still owe. But as of this year, there are no taxes. So we don't have that here, thankfully. And plus getting the tax information here was just a pain. Uh -huh. So the way that um, you said, you said, how do we do deals here? How do y'all close the deal? The paper okay. Deal, the Super deal. simple. Mm -hmm. Title. That's it. You don't even need a bill of sale. You just need a title. If you don't have title, then you need the bill of sale. But as long as you have title, that's all that you need. You don't need anything else. Wow, that's that's cool. it. It's, it's Alaska is really easy. Not only that, let's say, Kelly, um, I buy a deal from you. Mm -hmm. You can give me title and I can go to the DMV today and I will have title in my name today. It's wow. literally like a two, I know, a two minute process. So I, it, I don't just do in Illinois. I have um, deals across the border as well in Indiana. And so this was new for me because even when you buy like a car in Illinois, um, which, you know, has a similar titling process as mobile homes, it takes like a month for you to get your title. And then it costs a lot of money just for the title transfer. The title transfer here is very reasonably priced. So when I first started mobile homes and I went and they gave me title the first day, I was like, that's it like <laughs> they're like yeah I couldn't believe it I was like well that was easy it was it was so easy it was same day process they just do it while you stand in there and it takes like five minutes wow. so so easy so buying mobile homes here is simple selling mobile homes here is simple as long as you have title now if you don't have title that's a different story but as long as you have title it's easy you don't need a contract because a lot of my contracts are just verbal we just shake on it and I'll buy it right then and there. You know, I'll just exchange money for title right then and there. Mm -hmm. If it's something that needs a little bit of work, then I will actually bring my handyman contractor over with me. So I make the appointment with the seller. We go together. We do a walkthrough together. And I say, I want blah, 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 blah. He will um, write up an estimate for me later that day, sometimes on the spot. And then that helps me determine how I want to make an offer to the seller. And then at that point, the seller can accept or reject. It's, it's, it's pretty simple out here. So, Kim, since we're talking about repairs, you talked about the handyman. Now, yes. I, I seen you, and you had your little hammer and everything, and I'm like, okay, is she doing this for real? I mean, because to, <laughs> to build some stairs, I mean, that's going to take, you know, a lot of effort. It was so it was it was easy. Yeah, you, actually was, did, you actually did. You're not like me. You standing in the camera and they're like, hey. <laughs> no, it was so easy. So first I built some stairs in Illinois and I had help with that because that was a little harder and it was just the measurements and everything. It was just different. Um, so by the time I got here, I was a little more familiar with it. And I said, I'm gonna try this by myself. I thought it was gonna take me two, three hours. It took me only one hour. Building stairs is actually not that hard. If you don't need turns. Now, if you need turns, I'm not there yet. But if it's just a straight staircase, which you can typically do probably up to about five or six stairs, mm -hmm. that's really easy to do. It's not that hard. It's really not. It was very easy. to Like, I could show you how to do it in, like, 20 minutes. It's not that hard. Mm, okay. It's the turns. Then it's like, I'm not there yet. I, when I when I do a, something with, like, a landing, yeah. <laughs> then I'll let you know. Because yeah, okay. I'll figure that out. If you see yeah. me some stairs, I'm perpetrating. That's just very intimidating. <laughs> now I do 
So my first mobile home, Kelly, I did all the work. And I wouldn't say all. I would say I did about 80% of it myself. And so that's actually how I got started because here in Alaska, you know, we have really long winters. Like the winter starts September um, and it ends probably about May. And they only have about six weeks of like real, real summer here. So I was bored. I was just like, you know, I'm not, I don't hunt, which is what a lot of people here do. I've gone fishing, but I'm not like so into it. That is something I want to do. I couldn't go really hiking and you, you can do that. But at the time I was like, ah, uh. so all the stuff that people do here, I wasn't interested in. So being a city girl and being a home health occupational therapist, I'm going to see my patients. Some of them are in mobile homes and I'm seeing mobile home parks and I'm like, what is this? You know, I had never seen a mobile home in my life. Or so I thought. It wasn't until I went back to Illinois that I realized I was surrounded by them. I had just never noticed it. So when I started doing research, and then when I saw the price point, I was like, oh, I think I can do this. And I was bored, like bored to tears. So I just bought one. Don't do that, though. I recommend don't do that. Don't do what I did. (laughs) I just jumped in. Don't do that. And I was like, I'm going to do the work myself. And that's exactly what I did. I did the kitchen flooring. um, I patched the walls. I repaired the floors because, as you know, floors in the mobile homes with moisture, they have holes in it. I got my power tools. I was cutting holes in the floor. I did that. I I laid down the vinyl. I did the plumbing. I built a whole wall. I put in a door. I put in the studs, the insulation. I put in the door for everything. Cabinets. Like I was just learning just how to do stuff. It took me a couple of months. um, But I I put in a washer and a dryer. I built I had somebody come in because when you do washers, they don't use regular um, 110 outlets. They use 220s. This is why you do need a professional because that will kill you. So I had somebody come in, but they showed me how to do it. They helped me connect it, all that kind of stuff. Then I had to put in like the exhaust for the dryer. I didn't know how to do that. You know, you got to put the holes in, put the the whole thing. I learned how to do the whole thing, everything, (laughs) everything from start to finish. And even the stuff that I couldn't do, like that unit had, it had carpet and tile. I don't know how to do carpet and I'm not interested. So I had to find somebody to do it. So that was an experience because I couldn't find anybody who would do it. Um, just doing um, some of the exterior parts of the mobile home that, and then this was in the middle of winter. So you can only imagine just finding somebody to help is freezing here. There's snow. They have like two feet of snow. So it was an experience, but can I tell you that I had fun like every step of the way. I had, I was having just so much fun just learning how to do everything. It was so yeah, fun for me. I see your posts and everybody's like on it and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, but Kim, I think we've been in contact with each other roughly, maybe about a year or so. A little over a year, yep. Yeah. But so, what what is the prices of, of mobile homes out there? Is it a little expensive or? I think it's expensive for what you get. Uh-huh. And here's the catch. So, mobile homes here, you can get them at zero because I've gotten mobile homes for free. You know what I mean? That has happened to me. There has been a mobile home recently that sold for $100,000, which is the new one. A lot of people were kind of shocked. I would say the typical move-in ready price range is about $20,000. That is the typical move-in ready price range for a three-bedroom. However, don't get excited. That three-bedroom is not going to be nice. (laughs) It is going to need a little bit of work. It's not going to be the nicest thing to move into. It's probably going to have holes in the wall, probably some in the floors. The plumbing's not going to be the best. The roof is not going to be the best. It's just going to be moving and ready, but you're going to have to fix it up a little bit. So I think for what you get, I think the prices out here are high. Here's why. Because I've been wondering, like, why is this happening? Uh When I went to the Midwest and I started looking at at those units, those units have garages, which shocked me because that does not happen here. You don't have mobile homes with garages. They're really kept well, and they're in really good condition. They have lawns. They have concrete pads. Units here don't have concrete pads. So when they move a mobile home, it is on dirt. That is it. So I I know. I didn't even know that, which is crazy because they have earthquakes here. We have earthquakes here like every day. So it's always shaking, always shaking, shaking, shaking. So what I learned was mobile homes moved here um, in the 60s and the 70s because of, like, the oil pipeline and all the opportunity, and they just needed housing fast. There was no housing. So there was a man and his dad, they were just moving mobile homes, moving them, moving them, moving them. They brought them up here. It was supposed to be a temporary living, like housing um, solution. That was it. But they just kept selling them and selling them and people kept moving and moving and moving. So here we are, you know, 40-ish plus years later, and people are still moving in these mobile homes, but they're not maintaining them. So when I get a title to a mobile home, the majority 
are in the 60s and the 70s. Can you believe that? Mobile home titles in the 60s and the 70s. And this is pre-HUD construction standards. So I've had mobile homes that still are on fuse boxes. I've had mobile homes that are on galvanized plumbing. I've had mobile mobile homes. The one that I just got uh, two days ago, the paneling is older than me. And I'm almost in my mid-40s. The paneling is older than me. Wow. So these homes are old. So you, unless you take everything out and put something new in, you're really just kind of building on top of what's already there. Mm -hmm. So I, my experience has been, after doing this in multiple states, mobile home investing here, rehabbing is the hardest. It's the hardest it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if I can do that here, I can do it anywhere. Because when you literally have to reconstruct plumbing and electrical <laughs> and the roof, and like when you're doing all this kind of stuff, you learn a lot. You learn like a lot because you are you're doing a lot with these mobile homes. They need they need a lot. People are not taking care of them. And, and so, Kim, when you when you sell it to somebody else, OK, let's just say they need a bank loan. Is there an inspection that's involved? That does not exist here because of the reason that I just told you. Yeah. You cannot get a bank loan for a mobile home here. It doesn't even exist. So you it's not to, whoever buys it has to have cash. They have to have cash. They have to borrow the money because the bank will give you a personal loan. But as you know, that requires uh, credit. Like you have to have really good credit to just get a, a personal loan mm -hmm. or seller financing. Those are your are your options. But you cannot get there's no such thing as a bank loan in Alaska for mobile homes. It doesn't exist. So, Kim, when you finding these older model mobile homes and like they, they, they really old, can, can <laughs> some of them be moved? What do you have, mean? Like out of state? No, no, to, to another location. For yeah, they can't, yeah. Being that old, they still move them? Yep, it's, they sure do. It's not against the law to... Nope, wow. it's not against the law. And, and the reason why is because you have no other options. They're not bringing in any new mobile homes, and they're not building any new mobile homes. So, like, we don't have dealers here. We don't have people moving homes in from other states. That does not exist. What's here is here, and that's just... That's just it. So they do allow you. I actually have two moves coming up. They do allow you to move them, but you still have to get the inspection and you still have to get the permits in order to to move a home. So they could deny you like it's very possible if the home is, you know, not stable enough. But like I said, the 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 most the newest mobile home that I have personally experienced is 1983. And the newest mobile home that I've heard of someone owning is 1986. I have never heard of anyone owning a home here that is newer than 86. So my homes in Illinois are newer than that, but they're considered old by Midwest standards. Whereas here, they, that would be considered, you know, new standards. But the homes here are old, 60s and 70s, all of them. So when you're talking about inspection, you're talking about when you move the mobile home to its destination, it has to be inspected like it's strapped down correctly, not that it's inspected as to what's the on the inside. Right, the home itself has to be has to be inspected. So they inspect it to cuz you know, moving is a very Right. It's a oh, I'm I gonna say they harsh. Do the whole thing. They're just not inspecting how it was strapped down and all that good stuff. They're inspecting the whole thing after you move it. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm asking you. Oh yeah, yeah, they So no, no, they inspect it before and then you have to weigh it on the way. It has to be weighed. And then when it gets to its location, um, I guess I guess you can say the way they strap down here is a little different because, you know, because of the earthquakes and everything like that. So you have to have uh, that inspection and then like a water and electrical and a, and a plumber like licensed. It can't be the, the handyman. It has to be a licensed person who comes out and connects all these things. It's a process. It's a process. That's why moving homes here doesn't really happen so what i've noticed is when people put on the market that they want their homes to be moved it won't sell because the regular person is not going to move it number one because people are lazy they just don't want to go through the process of learning it's a process here so people don't want to do it so when someone wants to move a home um and i see it online i'm like it's, it's not gonna sell <laughs> i know that that's my opportunity because they're not going to be able to sell it there was a mobile home that needed to be moved last year Mm -hmm. uh, I put in an offer on it. They were offended. They didn't even they didn't even respond to my offer. They were offended by my offer. We had been texting up to that point. When I said it in my offer, they didn't respond. They wouldn't get back to me. Nothing. Do you know a year and a half later, that property is still sitting there? It is still for sale with their realtor. And I'm just like, they're never going to sell that because it needs to be moved. The only person or type of person that's going to buy that is someone like me, an investor. 
a regular homeowner, it's not like in other states where regular homeowners buy and move. They don't do that here. So, Kim, what, what would be, like, give us, you know, an estimate, like, the average lot rent in Alaska? Well, the average lot rent would run you, I would say, about 525. The lowest that I've seen is 465. The highest that I've seen is 565. Mm -hmm. And that gets you your water, your trash, your sewer. And depending on where you are, it might get you your cable, but I'm seeing that they're phasing that out. So it's mostly just the space rent, the water, the sewer, um, and the trash. Mm -hmm. and, and how are you going about finding your, your mobile homes? You just driving for dollars? No. <laughs> it's a tricky I don't, I, it's, what's interesting is in the beginning, I did a lot of marketing and I did a lot of driving for dollars and I did a lot of relationship building. And I remember feeling like I was so discouraged because it felt like it was moving so slowly. In hindsight, I realized it wasn't moving slowly. It was the way it was supposed to be. But, you know, in the beginning, you're all excited. <laughs> you know you want your first deal. So I was so discouraged because I felt like, man, I'm not getting a deal. This is moving so slowly. However, what makes me different from most other people um, is that I was consistent. I just kept going. Even when it felt like, you know, it, it wasn't going to happen, I just stayed committed to the process and I kept going. So to answer your question, now I don't do a thing. People come to me and they call me and they bring me deals. I don't have to do anything. I've got park managers calling me. I've got friends calling me. I got regular people calling me. I'm known as the mobile home girl because number one, my skin color. Then I got this hair. Then I'm a woman. So I stand out in a lot of ways. And there's just not a lot of mobile home like investors here. Mm -hmm. So I stand out in a lot of ways. So I'm the mobile home girl, somebody called me the trailer queen, <laughs> the trailer park queen. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I'm the mobile home girl. So people call me. I had a um, a park manager call me the other day. There was this home that I did. I posted it. I don't know if you saw it, but it was two trailers. One of them was old. It, it looked like a, like a uh, truck uh, container and it was there illegally and they were trying to sell it. They had evicted the person and they were trying to sell it and they couldn't get an investor to buy it. They couldn't get anybody to buy it. So she called me and I said, okay, I'm interested. But then she said, well, you need to hurry up because there's somebody else interested. Mm -hmm. I don't do fighting over stuff. So I just said, well, let me know if they don't get it. Well, they didn't get it. She kept calling me and I was like, I want to do it, but my team and I are backed up and I don't want to pay lot rent. If we could work something out, I'll buy it. She kept calling me. She worked it out. She worked it out so that I was able to get it. We worked out the lot rent situation. I, I ended up buying it for like a really fair price. Now, let me tell you, here's the thing. I didn't know how to get rid of that other trailer. It was like a whole trailer. We couldn't move it out. There was like a tree in a way and a fence, so we couldn't pull it out. I, but I knew that I could do it. I just didn't know how. So I finally found a guy, and they literally took chop saws and sawzalls, and they just cut that bad boy down. It took them three days. Mm -hmm. They cut it out. When I tell you that park manager was so happy, she came to me. She was like, I knew you, I knew you were the one that would be able to do it. And in my head, I was like, <laughs> but she said, I knew you would be, she said everything. And this is just the key for anybody that's listening. She said, everything you say you're going to do, you do it. That is key. When I buy a, a property and I say that I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to keep up with you. If I say, I'm going to bring you, you know, the lot rent, I'm going to bring you the money at this time. I, I bust my behind to make sure that I do what I say I'm going to do. That's why she kept calling me because nobody else would do it right. but me. Right. So that's that how I get deals that, now. That is key. That is yep. that's key. Yeah. So, so, Kim, are you doing any deals on land or all of your deals in the park? Or how Yes. So they do have quite a few deals on land here in Alaska. So remember I told you that I do regular real estate too. So, you know, the mobile homes on, on land are regular real estate. I do – um pre foreclosures. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I found this deal that was a mobile home on land as a pre foreclosure. And the lady was in pre foreclosure. And I just started, you know, I found her knocked on her door. Hey, you want to sell? She's like, Oh, I don't know why you want this ugly house. And I was like, don't worry, I can make it work. We worked out a deal. So this is actually like, like a steal. Um, once this goes through, we're in the middle of negotiating, not negotiating, we're in the middle of working with the bank on it now because she is in pre foreclosure. So to answer your question, yes, I do do deals on land. I have um, a couple of deals that I'm in the beginning stages of working on in Illinois that are also on land. But because I am not physically there, I have a partner. So we're in the beginning stages of that now as well. But yes, I would like to do some down south, but I have to be mindful of not taking on too many, you know, at, at once. I want to get the process down and then I can start picking up more.
So on these foreclosed properties, are you taking over the loan, or like a, a subject to type of deal? or? Does yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. I do subject to okay. this lady, this particular one that I'm doing now here, it, it, the balance of what she owes is so low. I could really just pay it off. Like I could just pay it off and just, I mean, it's like, you can't even buy a car for what she owes. It's so low. So I'm like, but then that would be cash that I would have just sitting in that property and I don't want to refinance and pull it out. So right now I'm just focused on just paying off what she owes and then just doing like a subject to. Mm-hmm. So because I'm still negotiating with the bank, I have time to decide. But I do I do have subject to deals that I like have right now that I own that I've successfully completed. And then her deal, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do a subject to right. or if I'm just going to pay it off. I'm not I'm not really sure. I have to do the math and see. So with the subject to deals, uh, I'm sure you have an attorney involved in that, right? Because what if you uh, off and then they don't give you the title? No, I get title immediately. I'm sorry, not title. I get deed. I get the deed immediately. I won't do the deal if I don't have a deed. So that's not a question oh, for so me. They sign it over to you. Oh, or okay. or I'm not doing it. That's it. <laughs> it's I get the deed now. You didn't get the deed, right? Exactly. You but I don't play that. And they don't transfer it over to you. you nope. Get I get deed it. immediately. Wow. Period. Or we're not doing the deal. Right. That's it. Yeah. So, Kim, are you buying and holding or, or are you just buying and selling it flat out or, or are you renting them out? What are you doing? So real estate, I buy and hold. I don't sell real estate. I don't flip real estate. I don't do any of that. I buy and hold only. Okay. Mobile homes, I don't buy and hold. I flip only. <laughs> flip That's it. Yep. So mobile homes, flipping, real estate, holding. And I use mobile homes as kind of like a launch pad for real estate and to to just have financial like freedom, just to relax. That's what mobile homes is for me. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so Kim, let's let's get to the real stuff. You know I was gonna ask you this question. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Yo, first, I mean, this is how we start talking. You posted something, it was like a bear running in the background. I was like, oh, my oh, that was my first post. That was my first post. And, and, and <laughs> I you were cracking up laughing. I was like, girl, I ain't never seen nothing like that. I mean, I mean, I applaud you because once, <laughs> once I see a bear, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Forget about that. Was, people are always tripping over that. That's a normal thing. You see here, we got this. Can you see that? Right. The bears crawl right up them stairs almost every day. They come right on up almost every single day. And you see, I got this. Here, I'll be sitting there chilling. You have to be very mindful because these bears will sneak up on you <laughs> in a minute. Are they friendly or? Um, I wouldn't say they're, I don't think bears are friendly, yeah. but they're, they're, I think part of the reason why these bears are not as dangerous is just because they've been coming, they come down this mountain. I live on, this is a mountain that we're on, we're on, we're on the side of a mountain. Okay. So they come down this mountain. Let me just put this show y'all. They come here. Yeah, like there. So they kind of come down this mountain uh-huh. all the way up there. And then they come on this path. And they've been coming down this path for like decades. I think they're just used to seeing people. I really think that's just what it is. They're just used to seeing people because people have been living here for so long. Uh-huh. So they're just kind of like, whatever. Friendly. And they just don't mess with me because <laughs> it's been so long. They don't really care. Because you posted the other day, you was calling one of them a name. I said, oh my God. I no, know. they don't care. They don't care. I was sitting right here on the deck and a bear just walked right past me like whatever. They just they're just used to it. I still don't mess with them. Don't make I don't want you to think that I'm out here getting bold. I don't do that. I still don't mess with them. Uh But and I'm still very, very cautious. I don't get close close to them. Somebody said, why don't you get bear spray? I was like, I'm not trying to get close enough to even use the bear spray. But I do have that. And, you know, you have like your pistol and your rifle, and then they have bear, be- bear bells, which I have that. That's your best defense because if bears don't like humans, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't like humans. That's why in that video, and I was like, hey, 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 everybody's like, that bear doesn't speak English. The point is not for the bear to speak English. It's because if they hear and see humans, they're more likely to just bounce because they don't like humans. So if they see you and hear you, they leave. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So big, what has been your biggest obstacle since you've been in the mobile home investing business? What would you say it was? My biggest obstacle has actually been help, to be honest with you. Just you finding... Or something or? Yep. Mm-hmm. Finding good 
reliable help. That has been the biggest issue. Part of that is location. What's interesting about Alaska is I have never in my life seen so many men and women who are 100% capable of building a house, fixing something, repairing something. I've never seen just a concentration of people who are just capable. People here can do anything. These are some, they can do anything here, okay? <laughs> anything, the men and the women, everybody. Uh -huh. However, a lot of people here, unfortunately, are alcoholics, uh -huh. um, drug users, and a lot of that has to do with like the, the climate, Dr alcoholics and, and drug users. And then the people who are not that, they're busy. That's it. They're just super, super busy doing, they have a business, they're doing projects, they have so many clients, you know, so finding help here has been like the most challenging thing in the Midwest, um, because I already have like a team, like I kind of have what I need there because of my real estate um, holdings. Mm -hmm. So I have a team there. That part's OK. Um, I don't really think I think the hardest part for that has just been more managing because I'm far away. And that's only because I'm new at managing mobile homes. I've been managing real estate from far away for years. That's fine. But what I've learned, what I thought was managing mobile homes would be similar, and I learned it is not. It is not similar. So that has been the most challenging thing with the Midwest homes. But, I mean, everything is a learning experience. You don't come out the gate knowing what to do. So now I know. <laughs> That's it. Now I know. Right. And, and so what, what is your market? Is it three-bedroom, two-bath? You know, because, you know, out here in Texas, we have big families, so, you know. Uh, one bedroom, one bath, I, I wouldn't probably be in a yeah. like that. W what is it out there for you guys? So I think out here it's the same as, as anywhere else. The, the best market are the three bedrooms plus. Like that's the best. So the double wides do really, really well out here. Okay. Then after that is three bedrooms, two baths. Then after that is three bedrooms, one bath. So I try to focus on that. Now, will I buy a two bedroom? Yes, I will but only with stipulation. So I'm in talks right now with the two bedroom. I just did a two bedroom um, seller, seller finance. So the stipulation for me is it's 100% on price point. That's what I've learned about the two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. If the price point is not right, it will sit. If the price point is right, I can sell it. I can sell it like really, really fast. It's, it's price point and size. It can't be like a super tiny two bedroom, one bath. It has to be a decent size plus um, the price point. My first, that deal that I told you about that I rehabbed, you know, by myself when I was doing all the work, uh -huh. that was actually a two bedroom. And so I turned it into a three bedroom because one of the rooms was large enough where I could split it. And it also had two light fixtures in the room, which I thought was odd because normally you just have one light fixture in the middle. Okay. So that kind of led me to believe that it was probably a three bedroom at one point and whomever had it took down the wall. So I just built that wall. What'd you say? convert a three two to a two two so, that drives me bananas you know what that lady i think she had been living there for a long time she was a senior she had been living there for like a really long time like decades and you know if you think you're going to be somewhere for a long time you customize your place the way that you want it to be mm -hmm. so i built that wall back up the reason why i got it because you're probably like well why would she do that anyway she died so I'm pretty sure she probably was going to live her last breath there, but she died and that was the end of that. And then I got it. So I just built the wall back up and then I sold it. <laughs> that was it. Um, so what are your thoughts on like a 55 plus communities? Would you invest in something like that? Because to me, that's narrowing down your audience as far as who right in that park. If it's 55. So plus. here's another thing. Alaska is such an interesting place. That does not exist here. Okay. We don't have 55 plus um, communities at all. But even if we did, I would not invest in that just for like what you said, because now you are really narrowing down you, to me. I would have to go to the census and be like, OK, how many 55 year olds do we have in our state? So that would be my first thing, 55 plus. And then I would take a look at, OK, what is the percentage of those that are living in mobile homes? I think in the United States, it's like six percent or something like that. So now you've got this small pool of people that you have to sell to, I would, if I were to do that, I would drive to the park to see how many for sale signs there were, because then now you have even more competition. So for me, that would probably never be part of my acquisition strategy, even if we have 55 plus communities here. The best to always sell to is families, because people will do anything for their kids. So you always want to sell to a family first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so again, with all these older model mobile homes and all this stuff, wrong on the inside what would be a deal but are you good 
sorry, let me tell you, if I hear a leaf rustle, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you laughing. Wait, I am. Be, wait, we ain't going to have a sideshow, are we? I'll show y'all real quick. I'll be like, look, let's go. <laughs> but I, I don't know. But go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> it might be a bear. They come through here and they come through here all the time. So I'm always like, but go ahead. I'm going to eat up while we're here on this <laughs> So what would be a deal breaker? Because it sounds like a lot of those mobile homes out there are pretty bad. So what would be a deal breaker? A roof or, you know? Here's the thing. In the beginning, when I was green, didn't know, okay. I was picking up everything, okay? Mm -hmm. As long as the price was right, I was picking it up. What I learned from that is you don't have to take everything. You can say no. You don't have to take everything. Okay. So now that I'm a little more mature in my mobile home investing process, a deal breaker for me is 100%. The first thing is the plumbing. Well, actually, the plumbing and the roof. If those things need to be done, they're kind of, I don't know if one is over the other. Mm -hmm. They're kind of the same to me. The plumbing and the roof and then the electrical. If those things need issues, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pass, even if it's free. I'm probably going to have to pass. Mm -hmm. If it's like the flooring, that is something that I can physically do myself because I've done it so much. Like I can do it. It's not that hard. Um, if it's the HVAC system, that's not that bad. I can find somebody. But the I've done enough roofs now where I know that with help, I could figure it out and I could, and I could do it. Mm -hmm. I would not do it by myself. But the electrical and the plumbing, uh-uh. <laughs> You, you need somebody that has to be willing to crawl under the trailer. And you guys are in Texas, so you probably get a little bit of snow, but you don't have, like, feet oh, yeah. of snow yeah. like we do here. And you don't have yeah. – right. And we also have below, like, sub-zero temperatures. So if the temperature is negative 10 and your pipe is now busted because of that, like, who are you going to call? It's not going to be Ghostbusters. you got to find somebody that's going to help you. You know what I mean? Right, right. So who, who do, who's going who's gonna to do that and frigid – temperatures and crawl under there and fix it right so those are my deal breakers now yeah I, I would be thinking the roof because the weight of the snow i'm thinking oh yeah yeah but even that plumbing is still almost a little worse just because of this if it's if it's summer you're fine mm. in the winter it could be a real like a real real problem that's why i'm like the plumbing and the roof i'm like which one I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of they're kind of the same because yeah, the thing about the roof here, they're, they're old. Aspect. Yeah, I didn't right. Know. Because you're in a warm weather yeah. state. You're in a warm weather state. But in cold weather states, you know, 32 is freezing. Once you get below 32, you have to be very mindful. So there are things that you can do to prevent um, mm -hmm. to prevent the pipes, you know, freezing. And that's a conversation for another day. But I had to learn that the only reason why I know that is because I learned the hard way. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. So it's all a learning experience. I know now mm -hmm. and it's not an issue because I learned, but the roof, the roofs here, you know, you have, you have the shingle roofs, you have that white TPO stuff, you have the rubber roofs and you have metal roofs. And so here, most of the mobile homes have metal roofs because remember they're old and that's how mobile homes started was with the, with the metal roofs. Mm -hmm. So the majority of the roofs here have metal roofs. I would say the second most popular would be like a rubber or a rolled roof. The, that's the majority. That's what you really kind of see here. And we don't have, you know how you have pitched roofs? Like, because right. remember, our homes are old and the newer mobile homes have pitched roofs. Mm -hmm. These homes are old, so very few of them are pitched. Most of them are kind of like that, like bowed, like flat. Right. So that's something that you have to take into. And then they tend to have sagging joists because the joists are old. And like you said, the snow. And Let me tell you. I learned so much about roofs. <laughs> learned a lot. I, I, I bet because if you don't have a peak in the roof, the snow is not going to slide off. It's just going to sit there. I bought, I have purchased one, one home I bought consciously knowing like the roof was caved in. It was like this. When you walked in, it was like, it was, it was like on the kitchen floor. I knew that when I bought it, not a problem. I was like, I want to try this. What you'll learn about me is I'll take on projects just because I want to try it. I'm like, okay, let's try it. Let's do this, do this. That was a really big project. I had another one that I bought. It looked fine. It just had like a little dip in the roof. And when we were feeling it, it looked okay. We tried to take off that paneling for the roof and the whole thing fell down. Like it literally fell. And we were like, this was unexpected. Well, I guess we're doing roofing today. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> wow. The whole thing, the whole thing felt like all the water just it was filled with water and so that little bit of pressure out that I was not planning on that I learned so much I'm, I'm grateful for it actually I know that sounds funny 
I learned so much about how to make the roof pitch, how much weight, you know, to put on it, you know, how to, how to get it from in the end. I learned a lot about roofing. My handyman is an excellent teacher and he knows that I want to learn. So he'll always say, okay, come on, it's time, it's time for you to learn how to do this. And he'll show me, he'll let me get involved, everything. Well, that's a blessing because we have it is a blessing that is a blessing because a lot of times they won't show you nothing because they won't know calling them so wow that is right crazy. he will show it's interesting because even though he shows me and i can do things i won't do things because i'm not skilled you know what i mean i could i could probably do what he did with the roof but what he does in five days would take me like a month so i'm that's not even something i'm interested in doing but i still like the knowledge i still want to know and i want to learn but I'm not interested in doing that. I like doing flooring. That's my thing. I like doing walls. That's my thing. I like using my power tools to build things. Mm. But I'm not interested in doing a, doing a roof. When I met him, I needed somebody to put in an exterior door. Because I didn't, you know, I was learning. It just felt like such a big project. Mm. I called him multiple times before, just, you know, asking questions. And then I called him to do this, this door. Mm. He's doing the door for me, that which, which was in the back. It was a rear door. I'm in the front doing some other stuff. He called me from the back of the trailer. Hey, aren't you trying to learn how to do these trailers? And I was like, yeah, well, you need to get back here and learn how to do it. Come on, let me teach you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going to learn. I wasn't used to that. So he called me out and he taught me like how to put in an exterior door. He and it's not, it's a, it's a very simple thing, but there's still some nuances. So I'm not an expert by any means, right. but if it came down to it, I could put in an exterior door. I'm just not interested in trying it. Now an interior door, I could do that all day. Not a problem. The exteriors are a little different. So he taught me, he was like, you got to do this. You got to measure this. You got to level it. He taught me how to do it. He's taught me multiple times since then. And then when he did that, and I was like, wow, he's a good teacher. He did some plumbing for me. Same thing. Aren't you trying to do these mobile homes? You need to learn how to do this plumbing. Said, okay. You know, he old school. I said, okay. Right. Help me how to do it. So that's how I started learning. So wait a minute, Kim. The plumbing, you have to go underneath. Are you going? Uh, well, I, I've not, I know. I've been underneath these mobile homes. It's, it's not comfortable. It does make me. Yes, but I've done it. I've gone underneath there. But the very, very first time that he taught me, it wasn't for that. I brought the plumbing up through through the plumbing that was sticking out. Uh -huh. <laughs> I needed to build it. So I built it myself. I built the plumbing through wow. in the house to connect to the toilet. And then I wanted to put a washer and dryer in the bathroom. So I did that plumbing by myself and I connected it by myself. So what happened was I had hired this young kid who said he knew what he was doing. He didn't. Remember I told you the homes here are really old. So it was a copper pipe. He was, I kept telling him, be gentle, be gentle. But you know, these young kids think they know everything. He didn't listen to me, busted. But you know, the copper is sensitive. It's, it's pliable and flexible. Busted it. Water is like gushing out everywhere. So I had to run and find the water shut off, the shut off valve, which by the way, if you buy a mobile home, make sure you know where the water shut off is. Because if you don't, you will never turn off that water. So I ran to the side, turned it off, and I'm like, now nah, I got to fix this. So that was the end of it for him because I was just like, he's not going to listen to me. Well, when the guy came in, my current GC handyman, because the piping is so old, we couldn't do like pecs and shark bites and all. It was old. So he taught me how to flare. Well, I, just, I wouldn't say he taught me. I watched and he explained. I still need help. <laughs> I was like, I don't get this. You, you have to flare and do all this other stuff. But water is, even though we turned the water off, it wasn't off. So water's coming out at the same time. It's all over everywhere. He taught me how to flare. That's all I have to say about that. But we got it. He got it. He got it. Because like I said, he's, he's old school. So he'll be cussing at all the tools. And even mother that was not going to get me today. We're going to get, you know, he'll be. <laughs> it's so funny. That's kind of got to have, I tell you. I know. <laughs> oh, well. So, Kim, yeah, you said you had gotten some like free mobile homes. So yeah. if you the free mobile homes, what would you say is your biggest return on your investment? Because I mean, ain't nowhere to go but up if you got a free uh, but home. You want to know what's funny? That actually was not the biggest return on my investment. Can you believe it? It was free because it needed a lot of work. Uh -huh. It needed a lot, a lot of work. So I, I guess you could say it was, I mean, because there is no place to go. Uh, I never even considered that because that one took me a lot longer to do just because of all the roofing problems. So I don't even consider that. What's interesting is the the best that I've had, there were there were two. One that I just did Friday. I bought it from these little old ladies. Their mom had died. She was like 100 years old. Uh -huh. And so they were little old ladies. <laughs> I bought it from them. I come from the titling office. 
and I'm selling one home, let's say home number one. So I'm having people come to home number one. One guy says he wants it, gives me earnest money. And he says he wants more. And I said, well, I got this other one. It's literally, Kelly, just a couple doors down. He looks at it and he says, I'll take it. And I'm like, but you don't even know the price yet. I don't care. Gives me $1,000 earnest money. I had only owned, earned it an hour. I had only owned, owned the, I can't even get the words out. I had only owned it for an hour and I technically didn't own it because I haven't even gotten the title transferred into my name yet. I just got it from the lady. Uh-huh. I'm not going to tell you how much I made. But it was quite a bit. Quite a I'm bit. very happy with that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> very happy. Can you tell us a percentage? 300, 400? It, it was probably almost double. Wow. Yeah, it was. And like I said, it's an hour. And he, he paid that earnest money out. No problem. He was like, I need it. And I was like, wow. I was very, very happy with that one. Mm-hmm. Very happy with that. I've had a couple like that. It's, what, it's interesting. The ones that I've made the most money on are the ones that I didn't have to do much the ones where i'm trying to do all this stuff they pay okay but here in alaska just not as well as like the simplest the simplest ones at least that has just been in my experience less has been more for me here so kim would you say you do any wholesale deals yeah that's how i started actually okay that's how i started was doing a wholesale deal Uh and um there was a lady who lived in florida her family had it here They had jacked it up. She was just so distraught. She was a senior woman. And she said, I don't have anybody to help me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll help you. And I sold her deal. And it was a wholesale deal. That was my very, very, very first one was a wholesale deal. The first deal I ever did. Before I even did the rehabbing and everything, I wholesaled. Yeah. And it didn't take me that long. It took me maybe three, four days to sell her deal. And of course, you know, you fumble your way through it because you don't know. So I just learned. I just faked it till I'm you know, nothing major. Not here. I mean, you have a title. I knew enough to know that, but I, I made some mistakes with that because I was learning, but they weren't major mistakes. They were just like little, little foo-foo mistakes. Oh. So you have it. She had the title. This lady sent me the title. Now I could have stolen her property. Right. She, <laughs> she was like, okay. And I said, well, we're going to need title, but she's in Florida. And I said, well, why don't you just send me the title? And she just sent it to me. Just sent it. Wow. I could have easily signed that over and taken it. She, she really just, person, she yeah. must have, because she mailed me the title. I could not believe that. Mm. That was it. And so then, like three, four, three, four days later, I sold her mobile home to a guy um, who wanted to start investing. Mm-hmm. He just needed a mobile home because that that house needed, it needed a lot of work. And this was before I even thought about rehabbing. I just was wanted to just start any kind of way I could. I just wanted to get started. So, Kim, do you have any words of encouragement for somebody who's trying to get into this business? I do. And I know we're on time crunch. I, I wrote it down. We're going to do this. Bill, okay. this was... To tell you the truth, Kim, I've interviewed a lot of people, but uh, your situation is like very... I know. <laughs> Not just because of the bears and all that kind of stuff, because you're actually doing this yourself. Now, when you see me, I'll do a little a couple of things by myself, but, you know, some sometimes I'm sitting up there perpetrating. <laughs> with a hammer or something i'm like okay take a picture all right hurry up you know but you actually doing this yourself at least you are yes doing it myself and it's just because i just i love learning and i i have a i have i have good teachers i have not just my handyman i have another gentleman who teaches me a lot he was the one the other guy's the one that taught me how to do the stairs uh-huh. um he, i have really good teachers that's really what it boils down to and i i like working on the mobile homes if if I weren't using this mobile home thing to get money to do other things, mm-hmm. I think I would just take three, four months and I would take one mobile home and I would just renovate it myself. But right now, you know, I'm trying to hurry up because I have all these investing goals. I just like it. it. It genuinely makes me happy. I really, really enjoy it. I love my little power tools. I have my own set of everything. You pick a power tool and I have it. I don't have a chop saw. I need to get one. But I'm going to start posting more about me cutting and fixing and just now, I got to go to a mobile home. I got to um, do some finishing touches. I trimmed out a whole mobile home by myself multiple times. I I like it. It makes me happy. It just makes me happy. So I got my got my words because I was thinking about this. When I started, I started thinking about, okay, what, what were my thoughts when I started? These were my thoughts. It was like, okay, can I do this? Is it possible for me? You know, is what I'm hearing on the Internet, is their story going to be my story? Will I be successful like them? That was the first question. The second question is like, what if I make a mistake? Then what? Then I was thinking, well, will I lose money? 
And do I even have enough money to do this? And you can also substitute money with time. Do I have enough time to do this? So those were the three questions. Can I do this? What if I make a mistake with all this money? So now that I'm on the other side of all this, like on the other side, and I'm a much more mature investor, I realize all you're really saying with any of those questions is, I'm scared. You're, you're saying, I'm scared. Okay, that's the first thing you're saying. And because of my fear, can I handle if my expectations are not met? Meaning if I lose money, if I don't get a deal, if I spend all this time and, and nothing happens. That's what you're really asking. At the end of the day, all questions come down to that. So if you're saying, I'm afraid, can I handle if my expectations are not met? Here's the answer. I'm going to tell you the answer right now because it's the same for everybody. <laughs> okay. Number one, mobile home investing is available to everybody in all states except for Hawaii. But even if you're in Hawaii, there is, an, there is a solution for you, I promise. You can send me a message if you don't know. There's a solution. But 49 states, you can invest. The opportunity is for everybody. It is a blue ocean. I don't care where you are. Competition doesn't matter because there is none. It's open for everybody. Okay? That's the first thing. I'm in Alaska, for goodness sake. <laughs> a lot of places that you would think for anything, and I'm doing well. So if I can do it, you can do it. So the answer is, that's the first thing. But also, like, if you think about it, you've handled your life so far. Like, anything that has happened, you've handled your life so far. Mm -hmm. This is the least of your worries, mobile home investment. Like, you can do this. If you've handled your life, you can do this. All problems have an answer, especially when you know who to ask. That's all it boils down to. Mm -hmm. who, who, who has the answer? Who has the information that I need? And I learned that recently on a mobile home deal that I had and a real estate deal. I thought I was stuck. I wasn't stuck. I just wasn't asking the right people. So if you connect with the right people, every problem has a solution. And then the final answer to that is you have to manage your expectations. What I have learned, and I'm guilty of this too, is that people are not, we're not committed. We're just not. We start something and if nothing happens in two weeks, we give up and we say it doesn't work. That's not how it works. You cannot, no successful person, I don't care what they tell you, no successful per person has gone from zero to 60 immediately. If they tell you they have, they're, they're lying or they haven't been in the game long enough, period. That's, nobody does that. You, people don't take into account all the groundwork that has been laid that makes it appear as if they went from zero to 60. And that's not what happened. They had years or months of doing blah, 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 blah. And then finally it just clicked. So my advice would be what, whatever you do, whether it's real estate, mobile homes, Turo, Airbnb, stocks i don't care what you're doing you have to make a decision and you have to stick with it whatever you do it needs to be a minimum of six months preferably one year if you can do that and you can be committed and not half ass it because i know this is the family channel <laughs> <laughs> you have to be committed if you can do that and just fully just be committed you you're going to be successful that's that's it don't it's not going to be easy so if you're going in expecting it to be easy don't do it because it's not. Just don't do it. Something's going to happen that's going to challenge you. Because if that didn't happen, life would be boring, number one. True. And number two, that's just how things work out. Something's going to happen. But remember what I said, every problem has an answer. And you can, you can do it. I'm still here. Right. Yeah, we can talk about all my stories another day because I got a lot of them. Well, What'd you say? You can make it out there to Alaska. I know. Come on. I have a lot of stories. That sounds like a very hard market. I'm not going to even front. That sounds like a hard it's been interesting. market. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah. been, it's been interesting. But yeah. to prove a point, I'm I'm really kind of the only person out here doing it. Like, right. But that's the case and in a lot of markets. Death too. You're doing it to death. Not just I know. Death, you're doing it to death. You made a name for yourself. Right. The other guy was out there. He was supposed to be king of the mobile. Now you done, you've taken over. You have taken yeah. Over. And, I, and, and Kelly... You know, I haven't even done what I could be doing. If if I really wanted to take over this market, I could. I'm because I'm physically doing the work myself. You know that takes a lot of of time. Mm -hmm. If I stepped away from that, even just fifty percent, and focused more on marketing and acquisition, girl, please. I could. I could. You know what? I think I'm gonna do it just to prove that that it can be done. I'm going to do that. Some sometimes that's what I do. I do things just to see what it's like or to prove that that it can be done or just for the experience of it that's my personality but anyway those are my final words be committed and just remember those questions ultimately that's what people are asking but if you're committed you will be successful there's there's no other you will period you will it's gonna happen for you period 
So, Kim, where do you see yourself five years from now in the, in the mobile home business? So, I want to own several mobile home parks. Um, I would also like to have joint ventures in multiple states with people. I want my parks to be investor-friendly, by the way. <laughs> investor-friendly mobile home parks. I want to have um, joint ventures with multiple people. I want to continue using mobile homes as a launch pad for real estate. So I will continue to acquire to use it for that. Mm -hmm. And then as my way of giving back, what I really would like to do is start some sort of a mobile home handyman and construction company, but not to make money. If it makes money, great. But it would really be to teach this next generation um, how to create with their hands. Mm -hmm. Because what I've learned is <laughs> some of the young guys here, I know more than them. And they try to school me. And I'm like, you don't know more than me. Because yeah. I'll listen to them. And then I'm listening. And I'm like, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> right. You know? And so then people don't like hearing things from a woman. I hate to say it. Sometimes they don't like hearing things from a black person. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very creative sometimes in the way that I say so that it's not a fight. But some of these young kids, they don't know how to do anything. And I think some of them just need a chance, especially where I'm from in Chicago. Some of those kids just need a chance and not just young men, like women, too, because I'm doing it. You know, some of these young women probably want to know how to do it. So I would like to start something where they can come in. They can work with my company, you know, on these mobile homes. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll pay you. And then they can learn these skills and, and take them learn these, you know, construction and building skills. Cause there's something very satisfying about like building something with your hands. And then you step back and you're like, I created this. <laughs> you, you're like, you're so excited. Like I did this. Oh, there's something like amazing about that. Right. Yeah. I see the smile on your face. You have your little hand and whatever. And I'm like, I'm okay, go with your bad self. So can I you love you it. talk about joint ventures? How would somebody reach out to you if, you know, they're interested in doing a joint venture with you? Can you provide yes. your information or? Yes. So probably the simplest way is um, Facebook and Messenger. So Facebook, Kimberly Land. Messenger, Kim World Traveler. And then um, th th that would probably be the easiest way because you can message me on there and, and get in contact with me there. And then I have a, a free mobile home guide, lifestylefreedomtoday.com. But Messenger and IG, that's the best way to reach out. I love talking about mobile homes. So just send me a message. Ask me a question. You know, if you're scared, because I was scared. I was real scared. And just for the record, I was scared on my first deal. And you helped me. You were the very first person to help me, just for the record. You reached out. Appreciate and you that. were, av yes, you were available and you called me, or maybe you told me to call you, something like that. But yeah. but you were accessible by phone, and you were the very first person to walk me through a deal and help me kind of just kind of analyze that deal that I was that I was looking at. So I am forever appreciative. Ah, and the feeling is mutual. I appreciate yeah, <laughs> I appreciate you. So guys, that was Kimberly Land. Kim, thank you so much for being on. Thank you. I appreciate it, and uh, we're gonna get off of here. But make sure you send me your email address. Okay. Yes, okay, I'll do that. Thank you thank so you. much, Kim. You have a Thank you. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye.